Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and Jose Mourinho wants a return to Manchester United. We're not joking, this is apparently true. What are your thoughts on this, everybody? What are your thoughts on this? Um, absolutely incredible. Uh, don't really understand uh, what um, or why he would want to do this. Um, it's, it's incredible, it's coming in from Mike Keegan. Um, surely not, says Jared. I've got some strong opinions on this, but this is the headline coming in from Mike Keegan, journalist from the Daily Mail, led from the front in relation to um, the, the the story with Qatar and Ineos. And uh, basically, this has come out in the last hour or so. Uh, Jose Mourinho is eyeing a return to Manchester United. Jose thinks he has unfinished business at Old Trafford and he's also said to be keen on working with the new setup at the club, i.e. Ineos. Uh, sources close to Mourinho say he's made it his mission to re uh, return to Manchester Manchester United should the opportunity arise, i.e. Eric Ten Hag was to get the sack. Well, look, I'm going to not mess about here. We'll go straight into getting a polyp and running for you. Would you, would you, you, would you take Jose back? Um, and we'll get that poll up and running. I've got some very uh, strong opinions on this. Very strong opinions. And look, we may have agreed on the, we may have disagreed on the Rashford thing yesterday, we're probably going to disagree on this, but I've got very strong opinions on it, which I'm going to give you in a moment. But we are sponsored by Manscaped on the show tonight. Trim the grass to make the yard look bigger. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code TUS. Fantastic uh, leaders in male uh, grooming. You can get the handyman for a clean shave or just tidy yourself up around there. You can get the beard trimmer if you like a bit of stubble. Uh, 11 different lengths. You can get the weed whacker for up your nose. And of course, you can get the lawnmower for down there. Makes a very big difference. Trim that grass to make the yard look bigger. Manscaped are fantastic products delivered to your door. 20% off with the code TUS and free delivery. You won't regret it. Absolutely fantastic. So give it a go. Links in the description. Big shout out to Manscaped. 20% off with that code TUS. But, well, trim the grass to make the yard look bigger. Bring Jose Mourinho back to Manchester United to make them better. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Look, I have revised my opinion on the sacking of Jose over the last couple of years. I think we got it wrong. I think the, 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 the issue with Jose Mourinho when he got the sack the first time was he wasn't allowed to get rid of players. Remember he said a few weeks ago, there's three players at that club still there now that I tried to get rid of in the first three months and I wasn't allowed to. He didn't, he didn't get the certain signings he wanted like Perisic. So Jose Mourinho's reign ended with the sack, but three things can, you know, led to that. One, he wasn't allowed to get rid of players. Two, he didn't get the players he wanted. And three, the club listened to player power. Player power was born with Mourinho. It wasn't his fault. Players turned on him. Club listened to him. He got the sack. It shouldn't have happened. But that's not a reason to bring him back. This, is a, this would be an absolute mistake. I like Jose. He's box office. We shouldn't have sacked him the first time and we should learn from those lessons with any future manager. But we should absolutely not be bringing Jose Mourinho back to Manchester United. It represents everything that's wrong with Manchester United if we do that. No way, Jose, says Shane Smith. Get your comments in. I want to know what you're thinking. We've had a few coming in already and we'll certainly be reading those. But my opinion to start the show off with this, and we've got some other bits to talk about around the Rashford situation and a few other bits as well, but... Jose Mourinho doesn't fit what I envisage Manchester United need to do to get back at the top of English football. Jose Mourinho is a busted flush in the Premier League. His style of football doesn't work. We saw it at Chelsea, we saw it at United and we saw it at Spurs. His style of football doesn't work. Jose plays pragmatic football built on defence and, you know, percentages. Look at everybody that's successful now. It's built on a press. It's built on possession. It's built on chance creation. It's built on a high line. Opposite virtually in every area of what Jose Mourinho is about. We won't see entertaining football. He's also a short-term fix. He, ne he never stays anywhere longer than three years. What's Jose going to do with Hoyland, Ganacho, Mainu? What's he going to do with them? What's he going to do with a five-foot ten centre-back like Martinez? This would be breaking apart everything that we're trying to build for some obsession around a manager FC. I like Jose, but he's not the one to do it. Um, he's not the one to do it. Um, he, he's really not. And uh, I don't think that uh, nothing, uh, noth I, I don't think, 
Sorry, I've just got to send this message. It is, it is related to uh, something, so uh, don't worry about that. All I can say is uh, something very big uh, happening uh, around the United stand that I think you're going to be amazed with, but uh, been busy working on that today, hence why I did the 9 o'clock show uh, and was in Manchester. Um, but I think that with regards to um, Jose, I don't, I don't see an avenue to go down here. I don't see an avenue to go down here at all. I really, really don't. I'm, I'm, I'm confused as to why people think that this might be a good idea. Um, I really, really am. I think that it's, um, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And look, I'm going to look at the, the, the poll here. I don't, I don't know why it's got fucking look ahead as the, as the, uh, as the, uh, as the thumbnail. I, I definitely set this up myself. Why have we got look ahead on the thumbnail? What? Just don't get me angry tonight. I'm not in the mood. I've been driving for five hours. I was up at five fucking o'clock. I don't need thumbnails fucking about either. Sorry, I don't. Piss off. Do one. Knobheads. Um, right, I've saved that. Hopefully it will change. Um, we'd be back playing boring football, says The Origin. Let's have a look at this. Po oh, my Christ. Oh, my God. What the hell? What? 52% of you would take him back. What's happened to this community? What's happened to this community? 52% of you would take Jose back. I despair. I fucking despair. What's happened to you? What? Right. Get start telling me. Have have the balls, other than clicking yes on a port poll, have the balls to get in the comments and tell me what you're fucking talking about. I haven't got a bloody clue. Jose Mourinho back. 52% of you. Why? Why? His football is boring. He focuses on short-term older players. It's not a good style of football. He won't be here long. He didn't. He tried this before. He didn't win the league. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. I, I, you know what? I'm, look, we're all about opinion, but I don't get this one. It, it, it's virtually the opposite of everything we need to do. We need to rebuild this club. We need to rebuild the foundation. We need to get back to playing entertaining football and go toe to toe with big teams with a long term structure and vision. Jose is the opposite of every single one of those things. He doesn't play good football. He doesn't have a long term vision. He's not really about structure and youth. And, you know, he's about experience and building a team for the now that gets a job done. And on top of that, the icing on the cake is done. He's finished. He can't even win Serie A anymore. He can't get anywhere near the Premier League. It'd be an absolute disaster. Look, what I will say is I do like Jose. And if United decide to do it, I'll back him like I backed Moyes, like I backed Potter. I just don't, I just cannot get on board with this. I don't understand it. So I need you to tell me. I really do. I certainly wouldn't want Mourinho back, but the guy who uses entertainment value would be great to see him back in the premises, George. Yeah, I mean, look, he's box office. There's no doubt about that. Jose Mourinho is box office. I completely agree, but I don't want him in my office. I don't want him in my box. People who are voting yes and people who don't like Ten Hag style of football not saying Jose would be better. Oscar, look, at the end of the day, if you want to, if you want to divorce your wife, go and get someone better. Don't marry Susan Boyle. Like you know, don't. It's like a dirty protest. It's like shitting in your own bed. If you don't want Ten Hag here, go and get somebody better that's going to have a long-term vision. Don't get rid of Ten Hag just for any anything else. Um, we should promote some of the 18 under 18, says Gaggled. No part of the bus football, thank you, says Matty. I certainly wouldn't want Mourinho back, but the guy, I've done that one from George. Um, thoughts on sporting director for Jose, says Dylan. I just I just despair at this. And, and I'm a Jose Mourinho fan. I like Jose, but this is just not what United should be doing. Mark, Mark, does Ten Hag bark when Rashford's went out on town? When will Hag lose his rag when players act like clowns, says Sandeep? Uh, I think it would be a terrible move for Jose. He needs to move on to an international career. I think he's done, AJ. Um, I did a video on that football last week talking about him going to Chelsea and I said it'd be a massive mistake to get rid of Pochettino and, and replace him with Jose. It's romanticism. I'm not going to change it just because it's United. I think it, um, it's encouraging that he would come back now. He obviously sees positive change on the horizon. Maybe feels he would have the backing. Mate, Paul, I don't care if you give Mourinho 500 million. I don't think he can do it. I, I don't think he can do it. I, I, I don't. If he went to Liverpool, I wouldn't be worried. If he went to Arsenal, I wouldn't be worried. If he went to Chelsea, I wouldn't be worried. I don't. I genuinely, I really like the guy. I think he's a legend of the game, but I think he's done. I think like Wenger in the last few years, he's finished. He, he, you know, 
people need to accept you're not great forever. You fall off. You do fall off. And I think he's fell off. I'm sorry. I think he's fell off. I don't think he's got that in him anymore. I don't think he's a modern manager in club football. I think it's romanticism. I think it's sentimentality. I think it will set us back. There is nothing about Mourinho's CV that fits in with what I want to see from Manchester United. I want to see innovation. I want to see a structure, I want to see a long-term vision, and I want to see good football. And he's never represented anything like that. Um, like buying a PS3 to run at EAFC, EAFC 24, his time has passed, says Mario Franco. Uh, would I take Josie back? Yes, I would, says Slow Sports Newts. I would give Eric Ten Hag the chance to prove himself, but I feel now he might get the player he wants, says Slow Sports News. I cannot stand another part of the bus manager. No, please, thank you, says Nigel. If Mourinho returns, McTominay never leaves, says Blair. Wow, just wow, says SXC. Look, <laughs> if we lose tomorrow night and we lose against West Ham, I think Mourinho's gone. Uh, so I think Jose's gone. Uh, I think uh, uh, Ten Hag's gone. So this is not, I, th I think some people are using this as a, is do I want Ten Hag or do I want Jose? That's not the question. If Ten Hag gets the sack, do you want Jose? Oh my God, 50% of you do. I'm baffled by this. You know what, I've been doing this for 10 years and, and this is probably one of the most shocking shows I've ever done. Not because you're wrong, you know, it's, it's all about opinion, but because I am stunned and I still haven't received a comment that tells me why 50% of you want Jose back when he doesn't do any of the things. I guarantee you within four months, you'll be going, why did we do this? The football shit, he's passed it. I'd, I'd, get, I'd, get, I'd bet any money. I'd bet any money within four months, you'll be going, why have we done this? He's anti-football. He's passed it. What a stupid move. Ineos are just like the Glazers. I guarantee it. I actually watch Mourinho because he's box office. I've watched his team at Spurs. It was fucking awful. At Roma, they never got anywhere near the top four teams. At Chelsea, you know, that last season, he'd lost the dressing room. At United, I don't remember any good performances. I, he won his trophies in the first season, but come on. Uh, you've got it. You've, you, you, I don't get it. I really don't. Um, I really don't. I just think... It's romanticism, I really do. I don't want Ten Hag, Eric Ten Hag to go, but Jose did have some sex, success here before and maybe could do more with a front office that would work with him. Kaylee, but you know what? Thank you very much for the comment because you're giving me stuff to work with and that's great. What is he going to do with a structure? Like this is, I, I, you know what? I will push this because I, I will push this. What is he going to do? What is it you think is going to happen? Has he had a personality transplant? Has he, been reading, has he been reading a book about total football? You know, we know what Mourinho is. We know it from when he knocked us out with Porto. We know from when he was successful with Chelsea, Real Madrid, back to Chelsea. We know what he is. He is what he is. He's Ron Seal. He does exactly what he says on the tin. He's a short-term manager that will be gone in less than three years who plays a very pragmatic style of football with experienced winners. That's what he does. And then when he goes, you've got to rebuild it again. I don't want this. I'm fed up of short-term fixes. I want Manchester United to play entertaining football. I look at what Spurs are doing with Ange and I go, why the fuck can't we get someone like in to do that? Uh, Pogba Merchants want Mourinho back, says Matty. Uh, KFJ says, uh, the chat is clowning today. Most people saying Jose and would do a perfect job as a Glazer director of football. Absolutely clueless, says KFJ. No Mourinho, no Ten Hag. At this point, we are better off managerless, I swear, says Parker. Uh, Mark, where on earth has this come from? Ten Hag in until the team is sorted. Clowns wanting him out, says Luca. He's a proven winner when he's gone, in, uh, including as people saying he will play part of the bus football. We literally don't have a style of football. He's a proven winner. Yeah, yeah, mate. He's been he's, he's a proven winner. In the last seven years, he's been a proven winner, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, he's actually been managing for seven years and he's not won anything significant. So he's not a proven winner. Uh, Mourinho would kick our weak, out our weak mentality if he could, says Jonathan, and play shit football. I, look, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. But look, where is it coming from? It's coming from Mike Keegan in the Daily Mail. I, I'm not concerned about this. I mean, I'm really genuinely not concerned about this. I don't think Man United will go anywhere near him. And I don't think it's the vision of Ineos at all. I also think that Jose Mourinho would not work well under a, a CEO like Barada or a director of football like Dan Ashworth. He wouldn't have the control he wants. I know for a fact Mourinho is not going to be our next manager. I know for a fact United won't go anywhere near him. And he certainly doesn't fit into a Sir David's Brailsford, Blanc, Barada, 
Ashworth structure that are going to have a lot of power and the manager's not going to have as much. It won't happen. It simply won't and it shouldn't. Is this Jose Mourinho trying to use Manchester United to put his name out there? Of course it is. Would he like the Man United job? Yes, he would. Was he desperate for the Man United job when he took it from Van Hal? Yes, he would. But the biggest reason I wouldn't take him is because it would be an absolute devastating blow to Ganacho, to Rasmus, to Menu, to Martinez. Those four players are not going to get game time under Jose Mourinho. He's not about that. He's not about development and he's not about five foot ten centre backs, in my opinion. So I, I think that would be horrific for what? Also, Luke Shaw would get sold. I don't want that to happen either. Um, he would probably build a team for two years around the likes of Casemiro and Varane and go and bring in a couple more experienced players and try and grind out a Premier League. He wouldn't, you know, that, that team can't play good football. It needs a manager that's going to come in and take time to get us playing good football. Mourinho won't do that. He'll abandon it. He'll park the bus. He'll be pragmatic. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. And it never should happen, in my opinion. But what I will say is, I do really like Jose Mourinho, his box office. And as much as it comes across that, that I don't, I do. And we shouldn't have sacked him. And we should have stuck by him back in the day because player power never should sack a manager. But right here now in 2024, absolutely not. No way. Never in a million years for me. Uh, just waiting for the but he got an awful Spurs team to beat a 6 one under Ollie. Chat, and I don't want Jose. I'd, I'd take a risk and go for Nagelsmann, says Jack. I'd rather win things over playing good football, says Chris. No, he... Yeah, but <laughs> Chris, he didn't win anything. He won the Europa League in the Carabao Cup in his first season, and that was it. Nothing in the second season, and then got the sack. He doesn't win things. It's a myth. Oh, he won nothing at Spurs. Won nothing at United in his last two years. He doesn't win things. He, doesn't, he used to win things. He doesn't win things. It's a myth. And if he came in, he wouldn't win the Premier League. He wouldn't win the Champions League. At best, he'd win the Carabao Cup again. And we've got to be better than that. What's the point in bringing a manager in for two or three years to win a Carabao Cup? I want to build something. I want to build something at Manchester United. Uh, wasn't there an interview where Sir Jim said Jose destroyed Luke Shaw? Says Glenny Boy. They won't bring him back. He'd make, uh, he'd make Tall McTominay the captain, says Stephen. Uh, Nate says, I'm glad you're critical about Jose. Rashford, Rashford three times, 13 months, and is given another pass. I don't know what you're talking about, Nate. Uh, what, why is it everybody has to make everything about Marcus Rashford? Grow up. Grow up. Like, it's got nothing to do with Marcus Rashford. We're talking about the next manager of Manchester United. What's that got to do with Marcus Rashford? His preferred playing style is a 3-4-2-1, which is exactly what we need. He is wiser and has learned like a great wine that has matured. No, he hasn't, Casper. Do you actually watch Mourinho's football? It's the same it's always been. He's not some fucking shaved his head. He's Pep Guardiola Mark II. He is what he is, and, he's, and his powers are waning. Look at Wenger in the last five years. He was getting worse and worse and worse. Mourinho is not going to have a Premier League renaissance. I'd love him to have one. If I thought for one minute he would have a renaissance, I'd, I'd applaud it. But I wouldn't want it be. I, wouldn't want, I don't want it at Man United. I don't want that type of manager at Man United. I don't want a short-term, boring football, rely on experienced signings manager. I don't want to go back to the days of Zlatan. I don't want to go back to the days of you know, Matic and buying players who are like 30, 35. I want to build a future. One of the positives we've got at the moment is we've got a 20-year-old striker, we've got a 19-year-old winger, we've got an 18-year-old midfielder. I want to build a future. I don't want to go back to the past. And look, you know, the 51% of you that are saying you want Jose back, you're exactly the sort of people that when you're on Facebook or Instagram, and an old flame from school 30 years ago slides into your DMs. You meet up you meet up with them in Weatherspoons and make the biggest mistake of your life. You shouldn't go back. There's a reason you broke up and you shouldn't be going back on sentimentality. He had his chance. He blew it. United blew it. Let's not go back there because we're trying to build something new. To see you irritated with my reason to vote for Jose, says Pranab. Mate, I don't care if 100% people want Jose Mourinho back. I won't. I've, ex I've, I've, I've um, expressed my opinion. Um, you can express yours. I very rarely say this, but you're absolutely wrong. You're absolutely wrong. I've, and as I said, I'd bet any money it would be an absolute disaster. Um, uh, Mourinho and his tactics have never been the same after Rui Faria left. He fell out with the player more often and also got tactically beaten more. This, well, Gobind, you know... Um, it's almost like an echo here, but you're absolutely correct. When Rui Faria left, 
Mourinho's career fell on the floor. Um, it's true. And that, that started at Manchester United. It did. He lost him and he lost it as well. People really think our new CEO who's overseen City and Barca is going to hire Jose Mourinho. Not a chance. Ten Hag's got more chances, Dan. Oh, mate, look, we can talk hypothetically. This, There's no chance this is going to happen. Absolutely none. It doesn't happen. The football is pathetic under Jose. It's absolutely short-term thinking, but just to play devil's advocate, I don't know who else is better than Jose to replace Ten Hag. I'm Ten Hag uh, all in till the end, says Amab. And I'd rather have Ralph back. Please not Jose again, says Diablo. Um, Jose for England job, to be fair, though. I'd, I'd give Jose the England job, Slow Sports News. I think, that's, I think international football is boring, pragmatic and slow. And I think it would suit Jose. And he's, he has got managerial skills. But for Manchester United, absolutely not. I would take Ranić back. Of course I would. At least he's a manager that fits in a little bit with what we're trying to build at Manchester United. But look, this for me, if I'm being honest, is exactly why I don't want Ten Hag to do well. Um, I, I'm sorry, I do want him to do well. This is exactly why I don't want Ten Hag to get the sack. I'm absolutely hoping that tomorrow night we win and Sunday we win and we start to build some momentum to build something over the next few months into the summer, into the next few years. Because, you know, some people want De Zerbi. Absolutely not. As I said this morning, Potter, absolutely not. Hansi Flick, it's a risk. Jose Mourinho, I take, I take Potter over Mourinho because at least he plays a decent brand of football and would suit working under a director of football and a CEO that are very invested in the football side of things. And I don't want to go anywhere near Potter. We've got to build a different future. And this is the thing about Ten Hag going. It's just, it's just throwing your toys out the pram for another toy. We've got to stop with this um, reaction approach. There's no logic to it. Jose Mourinho wants the Man United job. Good luck. I, 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 I want the Man United job. Um, I think Nate wants the Man United job. I don't care whether you want the Man United job. You're not having the Man United job. We're moving on. We're doing something different. We're not going back. I mean, God, how embarrassing it would it be to be to, to re-employ a sacked Chelsea, Man United and Spurs and Roma manager? I mean, for God's sake, it, that statement in itself says it all. Sacked by Chelsea, sacked by Man United, sacked by Spurs, sacked by Roma. Come and take the Man United job, mate. The CB is impeccable. Um, how can people criticise Jose because he won nothing at Spurs says Grand uh, Jose in people are Eric Ten Hag sackers um, says Kalig okay let's say Eric Ten Hag gets the sack who have we got to come in Javi maybe but if Jose does come in then I'll have to back him look I, he's not going to come in so I don't care but uh, of course I'll back any manager because you've got to give him a chance but you've also got to be vocal I didn't want Poch I wanted Ten Hag so I would be, I'll be vocal about this uh, Jose's reign wasn't perfect, but let's not all act like he wasn't properly backed. Mans, you're not listening. Van Hal wasn't properly backed. Ollie wasn't properly backed. Do you want them back? Like, to be honest with you, I don't see a massive difference between Ollie, Van Hal, and Jose. Like, I wouldn't bring any of them back. And they weren't backed. None of them were backed, and I wouldn't bring any of them back. You can't just bring a manager back because he wasn't backed properly. His style of football, his treatment of youth, his short-termism, and the fact that he's been sacked from his last four jobs are terrifyingly bad red flags. This is idiocy, in my opinion. Absolute idiocy. I've, I've yet to see a comment that makes me think, hmm, maybe there is something in that. And the fact that he wasn't backed and he was sacked unfairly last time is not a reason to give him the job now, seven years later. Absolutely not. Um, but look... He won't get the job anyway. Uh, also, uh, Mark, I will... Uh, will Eric Ten Hag's trigger point be for you, Eric Ten Hag? De Zerbe's Brighton don't have better players than United, says Olu. Uh, look, I, 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 completely, I completely disagree with sacking another manager. I think at some point you've got to back a manager and stick with them. And it's been a horrific season with very little structure. You know, players are letting us down left, right and centre. I think you've got to do something different and actually... Maybe you do look at what happened with Sir Alex and you go, look, he finished mid-table. Uh, we've got to stick with this and work our way through it. You know, sometimes things get bet worse before they get better. I'm absolutely convinced that we need to stick by the manager. I'm absolutely convinced with it. I don't see the point in repeating the Glazer cycle of sacking another man manager. And uh, what I'll tell you for free is if Jose Mourinho comes in, most of that team is going to get rid of. They don't fit with what he'd want. I agree. I think he'd keep McTominay. He'd probably keep Maguire, he'd Varane, Casemiro. These are all players that we're thinking of selling in the summer. Maguire, Varane and Casemiro because they're over 30 and they've got a resale value. And McTominay because he's a homegrown player that we can get some money for. 
M Mourinho would keep all four of those players, I guarantee it, because they're experienced players that he can trust. So it just doesn't fit in with, you know, that, and, and that's another reason that for me it's a big fat no. He'd keep players that I think we should probably be considering selling in the summer. The fact that we want Mourinho black displays how bad Ten Hag is, says Parker. The man persists with a third-rate keeper. Uh, I take Goldbridge over Jose. That's saying a lot, says Jared. And um, Young Sandman says, all the nonsense aside, it's weird to me. If Ten Hag gets fired, would not that feed into the player power thing? Surely in us aware of player FC. I, well, yeah, I completely agree, Young Sandman. I think the reason Jose got sacked was player power. And I think if Ten Hag gets sacked, it's player power as well. I mean, look, I was talking to Ricky today. He was up at the studio and he's going to be on the forum tomorrow. And I said, you've got to say this on the forum. Obviously, Ricky's never really been a fan of Rashford and we've always disagreed on that. But he said, look, at the end of the day, I don't care whether Rashford's the right player for Manchester United or not. Um, if you're out on a, th on a Thursday night when you've got training the next day, you're not driven with a mentality to make Man United great. If you're Erling Haaland, you're not out on the piss because you want to you want to be better. You want to win things. We've got players who go out on the piss on a Thursday night in the season and miss training. That's not a mentality to make you great, is it? That's not a mentality that cares about Manchester United. And I think that you know, I think Ricky's right. I think we've, we we need to we need to build something at this football club that's um, sustainable and focused and passionate and. We're not going to do that by bringing another manager in that's going to just tear everything apart. I think Jose represents a big name brand. Hiring him would be the exact opposite hire for the current new narrative of the team. This seems like agent talks is Omar. Yeah, I mean, look, the truth of the matter is Jose Marino's putting himself in the shop window. I want the Man United job. Look, can I just say this as well? I don't know where Mike Keegan's got the story from, but this happened to Van Hal as well. And I like Jose, but Jose likes Jose more than anybody. And he did it to Van Hal, and he's doing it to Ten Hag. It's really disrespectful to be putting yourself forward for a job that's not up for grabs. Um, but Jose will do that because he's, he's brand Jose. That's what makes him box office. Uh, Jose's hij hijacked the show, says Ross. Look, I remember when Mourinho was in charge. He's one of the managers that's, you know, you talk about player FC, Messi, Neymar, Ronaldo, Rashford, Bruno, whatever. Jose is the original manager FC. There's people who supported Man United when Mourinho was in charge because they're Mourinho fans. He's got his own fan club. Uh, time's end. This club has fallen into depth so low. It's feeling like an event horizon since time's end. Um, and amazing that people think a 27 trophy man is finished. He may not be like in 2004, but be more balanced. Roma never won anything before Jose, says Yannick. And he got sacked. Yeah, mate, I can I can bury your argument any way you want to do it. Just give me the shovel and I'll do it. Well, Spurs never won anything, so you can't you can't blame him for that. Roma never won anything. You can't blame him for that. If Spurs and Roma have never won anything, why sack Mourinho? Their expectations isn't to win trophies. So he's gone to clubs that don't win anything and still got the sack. They don't expect to win anything and they still got rid of him. Spurs got rid of him because the football was crap, and Roma got rid of him for because there was no improvement. They weren't getting anywhere near the top four. So that's how he got the sack. Simple as that. He lost the Conference League final, didn't he, last year for Roma? He's not good enough anymore. I love Mourinho. I actually do really like him. His box office, but he ain't good enough anymore. And um, I can't be a hypocrite because I did a video on that football last week talking about him going back to Chelsea because some Chelsea fans want him back as well. And I said, I'm not Pochettino's biggest fan. But, you, but Chelsea are on a far better trajectory with Pochettino than they'll ever be if they bring Jose back. It's a bloody nightmare. And I, I'll tell you for free, it doesn't actually matter what I think and it doesn't matter what you think. This club, under Ineos, ain't going anywhere near Jose Mourinho. The last thing they want is that type of a manager with an ego. And look, can I also say as well, I thought Jose was very unlucky to get sacked. But we moan about players not being committed to the cause. Jose lived in a fucking hotel. He never even moved up here. So I I I don't want I don't want anything to do with this. I'd love Jose to go and manage Liverpool. I, I, I'd love that. I'd love him to go and manage Liverpool. And that says a lot. I'd love Mourinho to go and manage Liverpool. And would Liverpool want Mourinho? Would Liverpool fans be dancing on the street for Mourinho? Will Liverpool be considering Mourinho as a replacement for Klopp? Will they bollocks? Will Barcelona be considering Jose as a replacement there? Will they bollocks? Man United won't go anywhere near this deal. Um, 
He won the Conference League, says Raz. And uh, season one, Ten Hag was better. I want Ten Hag back, says Sandeep. And I want Ten Hag to be the manager as much as you do. But who do you think, uh, what do you think if Eric goes, says Amit? Look, I honestly do not know what we do if Ten Hag gets the sack. I do not know. I was having this conversation today with with uh, Beth and a couple of others. And, um, you know, De Zerbi's a massive risk. As I said, Potter isn't the right man, in my opinion. Um this is another reason I want Ten Hag to do well because I, I don't actually see anybody that's viable in the market. And actually, whoever is good, I think will end up going to Barcelona and Liverpool anyway. But that doesn't mean you keep Ten Hag if, if we keep losing games. Um, if Jose come back, she, comes back, United will never move forward, continue to live in the past, says Ufel. Jose is the closest this club came to a Premier League post uh, Sir Alex, says NZ. So? It's not going to happen, mate. Football has changed massively since then. You will not see a team playing Mourinho-style football win the Premier League any time in the next 10 years. It's not going to happen. Nobody plays football like that now, and it doesn't work if you do. Um, not Never going to happen. Stop living in the past. I'd rather bring Sir Alex out of retirement than have Jose. 100%. And that would be cruel to do that. Um... Alfie says, how are you doing, everybody? Just want to say that what is wrong with our country today? People just want quick fix and they're scared that our manager will fix this if he stays. Uh, interesting. Um, look, talking, um, look, we can we can keep talking about the Jose thing, but there is other news going on today. Um, Ten Hag did his press conference. Obviously, Maud's reacted to that. Um, just a little bit of news around that. Um, obviously, uh, Ten Hag has said that the matter's been dealt with. He's moving on. We'll wait and see whether Rashford starts or not tomorrow. Um, I need to retract and apologise a little bit. Um, I said after United said it had been resolved, I'd absolutely guarantee there'll be a public apology from Marcus Rashford. There'll be some sort of post apologising to the fans. I'm led to believe that that is not in the plans at the moment. Now, whether that's going to change or not, I don't know. Whether you think that should happen or not, I don't know. But I'm, I'm hearing that there's no plan for an Instagram post or a Twitter post apologising for what happened last week. That is not apparently going to happen. Uh, Man United <clears throat> and Rashford have had their conversation and it's a closed shop as far as they're concerned. From Man United's side, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, there will no, there won't, well... There hasn't been one nearly a week later and we've got a match tomorrow. So I don't necessarily think we're going to get it unless it lands tomorrow. But uh, I I wrongly predicted that that would happen and it was stupid of me because I don't have any contact with anybody close to Rashford to know that was going to happen. I just thought that it was absolutely logical that it would happen because considering Ronaldo stormed down the touchline and, had, and, and, and did an apology, um, this is a player that was out drinking when he should have been at home preparing to train, disrespecting the club and its fans. I, I thought he would do that. And I thought it was an obvious thing to do, even if it's a PR thing. But uh, as of yet, it's not happened. And that was naive of me to just assume and say it was going to happen. So I'll apologise and say I was a bit stupid to do that because we haven't had it yet. And um, we may not be getting it. Now, whether we should get it or not, that's a personal choice. Um, it's not for us to say whether he should or shouldn't do it. I think it, I think it would have gone a long way to you know, calming the situation to apologise to the fans. But, you know, maybe there's maybe, maybe there's a really good reason not to do it that, that I'm not seeing. Uh, what are we going to do when Jose starts underperforming? Go back to Ollie. And when Ollie starts underperforming, we go back to Ralph and we go around and around like a big Ferris wheel in London, says Jack. We've not settled Mourinho's dues of his settlement from his sacking as of yet, says Mojo. And we're talking about Jose finally getting backed. How about Ten Hag finally getting backed first, says Ian. I mean, this is a great point. This is a great point. You know, bring Jose back and and, and and back him. I was about to stick with Ten Hag and back him. Oh, but he has been backed. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. He, uh, all right, he got Anana. He got Mason Mount. He got Rasmus. But did he want the players he got the previous summer? Has he got everything he wants? Has he been allowed to sell the players he wanted to sell? How many players are still at the club that he wanted to sell? I can think about four already. So, you know, let, how about actually backing this manager it'll be a lot cheaper and also let's not forget you sack ten hog 15 20 million you employ Mourinho he's going to cost you a lot of money as well 30 million gone straight away on recruiting Mourinho and sacking ten hog you got to think about things in a reality and not in a fantasy uh yeah uh somebody just said ten hog has been backed well you know 
some people just won't give Ten Hag any slack. Um, I will because I know the truth and I think most people do as well. Success requires patience. Ten Hag in, says Shivam. And just started watching the video, video. While I wholeheartedly disagree with you on Rashford, I think we'll both agree on no to Jose. His football doesn't suit the Prem, says Cyber Spider. And uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, there are a few other bits I want to go through tonight. So um, we, we, we will go back and forth. But uh, I feel I've said my piece on Jose. So unless anyone's got anything else to add, I, I, I feel it's probably uh, a good idea of me to move on. I'm just picking up on a few of the other Eric Ten Hag things. Um, uh, look, massive game tomorrow, as I said this morning. There's no two ways about that. Um, we've got a, uh, Jose said that, um, sorry, not Jose, Ten Hag says every game we've got to see it as a final. I completely agree with that. Um, he also spoke about how we're quite confident and on our best days we can beat anyone. On our worst days we go down to certain limits of what is not acceptable. So we have to push our limits to high levels and on our worst days get our results in. Um, and he was speaking about Rashford, of course, but I, I don't think that... Um, well, he said last two Premier League games, two goals and an assist. There's a development, strong bond between Rashford and Rasmus, and we want to continue that process. Look, I I feel that... Um, I feel there's a chance he might start tomorrow. I do. I listened to Ten Hag's press conference, and I feel that he might start him tomorrow. Um I don't think he should start. I think he should be on the bench if he's in the squad. I don't think he, I don't think he should start. I think it sends the wrong message. But we might get a reaction. Uh, we might we might get, might well get a reaction. I don't trust Rashford. That's the problem. And that's not a that's not a personal thing. I don't trust a lot of players in that team because they're inconsistent. And uh, but if it, if he wins us the game tomorrow, that's all that matters. Three points tomorrow is just all it's about. So um, yeah, but I think that. It, Look, it's a tough one. It's a tough one to call. I don't know whether he'll do it or he won't do it, but um, I'm not the boss. Mojo's gifted 20 memberships. Thank you very much. And we have to concede that Eric Ten Hag inherited a nightmare, says Ray. And uh, thank you very much for that. Um, Taryn says, Mark's in all black today, looking sharp. I've got my dark jeans on. Why are you early? Um, well, I'm early because... Um, well, I was I was going to be live at 7 because I'm doing Liverpool-Chelsea at 8. But uh, obviously with the Jose thing going on, I just got in from Manchester and I thought, sod it, let's do that and I'll have my dinner afterwards because uh, I was eager to get your opinion on it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm still very, very surprised by your opinion. But then again, it is all about opinion. Um, Mourinho, look... I can say what I can say. You can say what you can say. But there is absolutely no way that um, United will take him on. They just won't do it. Absolutely not. Um, and in a way, it's a little bit desperate anyway. A manager declaring their love for, um, you know, taking the Man United job um, is is rather desperate. Because cause he's in a desperate time, isn't he? He's not going to be headhunted by Liverpool. He's not going to get headhunted by Barcelona. So, you know, he's trying to take a job that might seem vulnerable that he wants to get. Uh, and look, being people say people say, well, this isn't the case, but it is the case. By stating or get his agent stating or his PR stating that he'd love to have the Man United job back, even though he knows he's not going to get the job, it still puts Jose Mourinho on the back of newspapers and makes his name relevant and moved the story away from sacked by Roma. Instead of Jose Mourinho sacked by Roma, we've now got Jose Mourinho wants the Man United job. A negative becomes a positive piece of PR. And Jose's the master of that. He is the master of that. And uh, he'll be looking for, you know, instead of being associated with the sack, he's now being associated with one of the biggest sports brands in the world in, in a more positive way. Um, I also think he's... Uh, Hasn't he got a documentary coming out soon as well? I'm sure somebody... I don't think he actually has. Um, but... Uh, oh, no, he has. He has. He's got a new Netflix documentary coming out. Um, I don't know when it's coming out. Let's have a look. So, yeah, he's got to get his, he's got to get his name out there, hasn't he? I don't know when it's coming out, but he has got a new Netflix documentary coming out. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm okay with whatever punishment is, apology or not, as long as Rashford gets motivated by it, says AJ. Look, I, I, I want to move on from the Rashford thing. I knew, I knew we'd be talking about it a little bit because Ten Hag spoke about it. 
you know, I got into a lot of trouble with you lot. I have to take that on board. You're the community. The channel is what it is because of you. And I'll never, ever uh, underestimate or disrespect that. And, uh, and most of you disagreed with me. Um, but I will concede, and I always said this, I think I'm very, very surprised there isn't some sort of tweet or Instagram post with words on it saying I'm apologising to the Man United fans. I, I'm very... T and I'm not, that's not a dig at Team Rashford. That's just an expectation because, you know, as Ricky was saying, taking responsibility for something makes it sound like you're taking responsibility for something people didn't know about. Everybody knows what you did. So there should be an apology. You know, at the end of the day, who pays your wages? At the end of the day, who buys your books? At the end of the day, who follows you on Twitter? At the end of the day, who buys your shirts with the names on it? Your fans. It's your fans. So, you know... Your fans have been let down. And I think as a role model, as a role model, you should apologise to those fans and you will actually feel a benefit from that. Because some people are going to go, you can't even be asked to apologise for us, uh, to us. And that's not going to help it, is it? So I, I think I, I was very surprised that that hasn't happened yet. And if it doesn't happen, I'll be very surprised about it. But that's as negative as you're going to get on me on that because I, I do agree with what the club has done. I know for a fact, as, as, as much as you do, that the Newport game uh, in Ten Hag's mind was the suspension. And um, that's why he's back in the game today. Mark, uh, if people seriously want Mourinho over Ten Hag, then we have failed as a fan base. As Frederick, we can't keep sacking managers every three years. And Mark, as a Jamaican, I wish United would get Leon Bailey. He is a player with a strong mentality, says Tevin. And Luton have got more goals this season than us. That's sackable. No wonder the Jose rumours are popping off, says Mike. Yeah, last time I checked, we were above Luton in the Premier League. I'm not really bothered about goals scored. I know we should score more, but um, I'd rather be where we are than Luton. Honestly, I'm OK with whatever the punishment is. I've done that one from AJ. And is there a deadline day stream again tomorrow, says Luke? Yeah, there is a deadline day stream tomorrow. We're going to start off at 6 a.m. and we're going to go all the way through till 11 p.m. We're going to start off with uh, counting sheep. Then we're going to have a massive game of chess. Then it's going to be Monopoly. Then I spy. Mate, there's no transfer deadline day stream tomorrow. I mean, this 2024 January transfer window, collectively and for Manchester United, takes the crown quite comfortably of the most boring transfer window there's ever been. And we may as well have not bothered. It's been an absolute... I, I'm so glad Man United are playing tomorrow because it's a non-event. Like, I'm so glad United are playing tomorrow. We can have the fan forum, the build-up, the watch-along, the match reaction and completely and utterly cover off this shitty transfer window. There's nothing happening tomorrow. Nothing. And... Um, yeah, there's nothing happening tomorrow. No, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not even... Um, uh, oh, McKenna says we could play Snakes and Rashfords. Oh. Um, uh, there's not even anyone who's going to leave tomorrow. Not even on loan. So, yeah, it's uh, it's another murder. Madness is red. Well, the reason we can't do anything is because we've got no money. But to be fair, no one else is doing anything really anyway. Do you think the quality of players we have now is better than Spurs and Roma? And that makes a case, says Pravi. I don't think, look, I, I, if you want Jose, 50% of you do. I can live with that. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I just, I, I've detailed my numerous reasons why I think it's absolutely idiotic. Uh, and I've also told you it won't happen. Um, if you know anything about Barada, and I'm sure you do, because like me, you've probably been reading up on him and listening to stuff over the last few weeks. He won't go anywhere near Jose Mourinho. It's, a com it's completely wrong. It's not a good fit. It's never going to happen. It, it, it just won't happen. It's like Elton John marrying Taylor Swift. It's never going to happen. Barada is never going to team up with Jose Mourinho. And Jose Mourinho is never going to work under a CEO like Barada or a director of football like a Dan Ashworth or a Paul Mitchell. It's just not going to work. And on top of that, you've got Sir David Brailsford running a constant um, review. You've got people like Blanc who know how to make things work. It, it's You know what? The more I think about it, I should have just said it at the start. This is just PR from Jose's team to get his name away from a Roma sacking and attached to a positive Manchester United to put him in the shop window for a documentary and potentially another job. Um, Jose's not going to retire and maybe he wants another club job and I'm sure he'll get one. 
but it's not going to be at Man United. Ineos needs to back Ten Hag, says Alessandro. Uh, and NZ says, will I get a personal apology when Mourinho wins the Premier League next year? You're going to be waiting for a very long time, mate, because whether I'd give him the job or whether you would give him the job, Ineos ain't going to give him the job. Um, Elton John and Taylor Swift can make a good couple, though. They can make good music, Sanjid, but they're never going to make a good couple. He had a good go, but not good enough. We have been there once and don't want to go back. Let's uh, go forward, says Roddy. I mean, look, you know what? I mean, we're, we're sort of playing along with the pantomime, aren't we, here? I mean, I almost feel like Jose is going to start walking behind me and you're going to go, he's behind you! Where? He's moved. He's behind you. Where? It's a pantomime. This is a pantomime that we're, you know, this is a PR pantomime. But... For the many reasons I wouldn't take him, on top of that, he's got players at this football club that stabbed him in the back. He's got players at this football club that he doesn't like. So it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. It would be absolute carnage. Uh, what about Van Nisseroy, says Simon? I don't think we're going to go Dutch again, is it? Ryan says, is this because Pep said Klopp was his best rival? Uh, I don't know. Um, and... Are we playing that fool in goalkeeper Anana tomorrow, says Taron? Uh, I believe Ten Hag did say that he is back tomorrow um, in goal, which I think we always knew would be the case. Um, I don't know whether I've got that direct quote. Um, Mason Mount's not back tomorrow, no. No. Uh, oh, on Anana... Mason Mount is too soon, but Anana will return. So, yeah, Anana's going to get playing goal, isn't he? We knew, I, I knew that anyway. I did it in the preview last night. Um, what I do know is that um, there's been some very angry reaction Um To the Rashford situation um, at Manchester United um, from Ten Hag. Um, what I do know is that he's not as strong as he was. And I, I, I don't know why people don't take this as a positive. Even You know, I've had a lot of shit for sort of saying we need to move on. But even if you don't want to move on, and even if you're angry about the Rashford situation, I know for a fact he's not as strong in the dressing room as he was before. Um, you know... Rashford's damaged his own player power if he had any because he's had a right rollicking on Monday and I I think the club have done the right thing to keep it in house. I think they've I think they've done the right thing in what they're doing and I think we probably will see a reaction from Rashford and then we do win but he's um he's certainly, you know, in that position at the moment where he's the naughty boy and um He's got to react and behave. So I think that could be a good thing. Kia, welcome to the Members Club. And quite rightly, he has misbehaved. Travis Kelsey is doing Taylor, Taylor Swift anyway, says Wang. And uh, thank you very much for that. Great thought. Uh, I am doing Liverpool against Chelsea at 8 o'clock on the um, That's Football. Yeah, so I, I will see you over there. Uh, please smash a like and subscribe, by the way, bottom right-hand corner. On more positive note, Manchester United are playing tomorrow night and they're playing on Sunday. And... All I'm going to say is I've been doing something today that you should see come to fruition early next week, maybe the week after. Um, and I am massively, massively excited about it. And all I can say as a hint is that it's because of you, because of you. And uh, we've been working on it for a very, very long time. And I think you're going to be very, very happy with it. And I'm so excited to uh, um, get it out uh, and show you um but we've got to we've got to get through a couple of games first that's what we're going to do and then next week hopefully or the week after we we will be able to announce it to you but uh, very very excited about it and uh I know I'm not giving much away but trust me Christmas was last month you're going to you're going to think it's Christmas all over again if you celebrate Christmas and um yeah um because we've been you know finalizing it today and I'm so excited and proud about it. I'm obviously in the mood of ho hopefully what you'll be like when you know what it is. And because I've experienced it today, I'm just very grateful for this community because it absolutely would never have happened without your support over the years. Um, and, you know, that's not just people like members, but also everybody. So uh, really, really um, 
really uh, grateful to you as always and uh, can't wait to share it with you. If we'd signed Suzuki, we'd have lost both goalkeepers by now, says Cold Logic. And I, yeah, well, what is he doing now, Suzuki? I think Eric Ten Hag has been overruled on Rashford, says James. I don't think he has. I don't think he has at all. Uh, I really don't. Um, somebody just said something about deal done. Let's have a quick look about this. Um, where am I supposed to be looking at? I've uh, done Jose Mourinho. Okay, Miguel Delaney, who I think is a bit hit and miss as a journalist anyway. Ineos have narrowed their search for Manchester United's new sporting director. Uh, Bayern Munich's Christoph Freund, outgoing Roma official Thiago Pinta and former Leipzig director Max Erbil are being considered. Well, there's three names we never fucking even spoken about. There you go. Well, I look, I, I sort of feel like... Um, I sort of feel like that... You remember... Well, look, you should be watching every United stand show... But I sort of feel like um, people should start listening to some of the information that we do get. Uh, remember what I was saying this morning? It's on the title of the show this morning. Uh, uh, Ash with deal concern. Um, we were told last night that United are increasingly concerned that they're not going to get Dan Ashworth, their number one target. Um, it appears that may well be true because we're now seeing that we're getting three different names. Uh, and none of them are Paul Mitchell as well, which is, which is, you know, maybe, maybe it's, I mean, look, I'll be honest here. All three of those names, Christoph Freund at uh, Bayern Munich, um, Thiago Pinto at Roma and Max Erbel from Leipzig. All three of those people would completely and utterly contradict this whole Brexit approach that Ineos are prob probably going to have, uh, apparently going to have. And I said that about that. That is an unfair stereotype generated by who? I don't know. Because if we end up with um, Omar as the CEO and then we get one of these guys as director of football, none of them have got a British passport. So, look, I don't really know anything about those three names. I don't know anything about uh, Freund at, at, at Munich or Pinto at Roma or Erbel at uh, Leipzig. But... If they're the elite people, then go and get them. I've just realised that people will start going, if we get Pinto from Roma, that means we're going to get Ten Hag. That means we're going to get Jose. Um, it won't happen. Mark, I don't want to sack Ten Hag, but if we did, who is out there? I don't want Potter or De Zerbi, and I don't think uh, they're good enough. Who is out there? And that's the problem, Salt. And it's a very, very big problem, isn't it? Um, but as I've always said... Ten Hag can sack himself. Like, if United lose a load more games, he'll have to go. And then you've got to start again. And I don't think the manager market looks that good at the moment. I think there has been times when the manager markets look good. I don't think it looks very good at the moment. Um, uh, D Trizzy says, Mark, what time did you get to bed? Asking for a mate. I got to bed at a good time last night, about 11 o'clock. I had to get up at five. So I, I need more than six hours. I'll be falling asleep in the Liverpool-Chelsea game if I'm not careful. Um, uh, one of our members, Terp, says apparently Erbil is elite. He's at Leipzig, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, look, out of those two names, I'd rather I'd rather go for the Leipzig guy or the Bayern Munich guy because I think the recruitment of Leipzig and Bayern Munich is better than Roma, in my experience. So I'd rather go for those two. And also, I'd probably rather go for the Bayern Munich guy because Bayern Munich club is a massive club. You know, we've taken a CEO from Man City. If we took a director of football from Bayern Munich, at least you know you're dealing with people who are very good at dealing with big reputations. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, that, but look, that if there's... And look, I don't think Miguel Delaney is the best journalist when it comes to top quality sourced information. And that's three names we've never heard of yet. So, um, and, and... But... but as I said this morning, I'm not going to completely dismiss it because when you think about what we were told this morning with our exclusive that the Dan Ashworth situation is looking very unlikely at the moment. Well, if you're moving away from Dan Ashworth, maybe we're looking at different targets. Um, I, I'm surprised we've not been linked to Berta, but maybe that's just not what Barada wants to do. And as I said this morning, United need to bring a director of football in now. 
They can't wait till the summer. It has to happen now. Even if you bring somebody in now and then bring somebody else in in the summer. I'm not saying you sack that person, but you need to bring a director of football in now. We've got to get on with it now. And if we don't, then we may as well write the summer transfer window off because uh, it will be a massive problem um, for Manchester United, uh, of course. Um, OK, I'm going to be on the 8 o'clock show on That's Football very, very shortly. Um, I've enjoyed the show tonight. I've enjoyed the shows this week. They've been they've been quite draining because they've been quite divisive. And I'm never going to shy away from that because, you know, we're all about different opinions. But this week has been a particularly challenging one um, in relation to division, um, which is quite draining. But look, respect. That's what it's all about. We're passionate people and we care about our football club. And we've all got our own ideas about what we should do. Um, make sure you smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe bottom right hand corner. And hopefully I will see some of you on That's Football at 8 o'clock. I'm going to do Liverpool versus Chelsea. Watch along. And then tomorrow we get Man United against Wolves, which I'm very excited about because I don't know what the outcome is going to be. But we need to see something. Uh, on the poll, 51% of you would take Jose Mourinho. 49% of you wouldn't. I'm absolutely amazed. 20,000 votes, which means over 11,000 of you would take Jose Mourinho back. It's absolutely incredible. And on that bombshell, I'll see you on That's Football later on. Speak to you in a bit.